the inverse tangent function is the last tr uh, inverse trig function that you'll be responsible for graphing. Um, the other three I want to show you how to graph on your calculator. Let's start with um, with the inverse tan. This one is actually um, pretty reasonably easy to, to do. We need to first again look at a piece of the graph that would be considered one to one. And for inverse tan, that piece is actually just one cycle. So we'd be looking at the we want to restrict the domain for the inverse tangent function from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. The range for uh, t the tangent function is all real numbers. So we're going to use this information to help us graph the inverse tan or the arc tan. And again, I'm going to use, um, we know we have vertical asymptotes at pi over 2 and at negative pi over 2. And when you're asked to give the, you know, the equation of an asymptote, you want to make sure you state it as an equation and not just a value. So it's x equals pi over 2 and x equals negative pi over 2. These are vertical asymptotes. I also want three, you know, three points that I can graph pretty easily. And for tan, these are the three points that I know are on the graph. I know 0, 0 is a point on the original graph. I know that pi over 4, 1 is an original point, and negative pi over 4, negative 1. Remember that tan is also an odd function, so if pi over 4, 1 is on the graph, then negative pi over 4, negative 1 is also on the graph, and those three points are right here. So when I go to graph my inverse tan, Remember, we are what was the domain is now going to be the range and vice versa. So the domain of the inverse tan is going to be all real numbers. The range we're going to get from the restricted domain is going to be negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And I actually want to... Um, Again, sometimes when I make a mistake, I edit it out, and sometimes I actually like to leave it in there because it is a common error that students will make, and to try and kind of stop you from doing that. So that there is a mistake uh, with my restricted domain, and hence the range. A very It's subtle, but just take a few seconds and, and see if you can figure out what I did wrong and how we can correct it. It has something to do with the fact that that is an asymptote. What I did was I had... I have square brackets here, which means that I'm including the negative pi over 2 and the pi over 2, and those are not in the domain, so I have to use open um, parentheses. And let's now use the, the three ordered pairs. Our new ordered pairs will have, we'll have 0, 0. Instead of pi over 4, 1, we'll have 1 pi over 4. And instead of negative pi over 4, negative 1, we'll have negative 1, negative pi over 4. Again, we're talking about the inverse, so the x-coordinate is now a trig ratio, and the y-coordinate is now an angle. We're going to label the y-axis. We'll go from negative pi over 2. Excuse me. To pi over 2. We'll put in where we had a vertical... Where we had a vertical asymptote, x equals pi over 2, we're actually now going to have a horizontal asymptote of y equals pi over 2. And the second horizontal asymptote would be y equals negative pi over 2. So just as we change the x's and y's, the vertical asymptotes now become horizontal. So we'll draw those in. Graph our three special points. I've got 0, 0. We'll call this 1. We'll call this negative 1. So this right here will be pi over 4. So over 1 up pi over 4. And negative 1 down pi over 4. 
and there is a slight curve in the middle. Again, it's it's almost linear, but it's there is a curve there, and we approach our asymptotes. So this is the graph of inverse tan. So I've written down the the special angles for tangent from 0 to pi over 2, but th those you should have committed to memory by now, but sometimes it helps to write them down when we're when we're evaluating inverse trig functions. And also, um, the, the, the domain was from 0, from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, so I can have a fourth quadrant, you know, negative acute angle, or a first quadrant angle as an answer, as an output value for inverse tan, um, just like for inverse sine. So let's evaluate without a calculator. So without a calculator, you'd be asked to you know evaluate special angles. So the inverse tan is zero. Inverse tan of square root of three over three. Inverse tan of if we did negative square root of three over three. So the inverse tan of zero is the angle whose tangent is zero, and that is zero. Remember, the input is a trig ratio, the output is an angle. The inverse tan of square root of 3 over 3, so the angle whose tangent is square root of 3 over 3, remember, there are, there are an infinite number of angles that have a tangent of square root of 3 over 3, but only one of them is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, so we are at pi over 6 as our angle. And just like with sine, the inverse tan of a negative number is always going to be just the opposite of the inverse tan of that positive ratio. So it's going to be negative pi over 6. It's a fourth quadrant angle. So for inverse sine and inverse tan, when the argument, right, when the trig ratio is negative, you automatically have a negative acute angle coming from the fourth quadrant. When inverse tan is positive, you always have a positive acute angle coming from the first quadrant. Uh, but for inverse cosine, remember, when inverse cosine is negative, you find yourself in the second quadrant. There are no negative angle answers for inverse cosine because our range is from 0 to pi. Right, I next want to show you how to graph an inverse trig function using your calculator, using the um, TI. So I'm in radian mode, and I want to use the second function keys to get the inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent. So I'll hit second sine in my y equals, we need to be in y equals to graph, x and close the parentheses. I'm going to do a zoom trig. So that gives me a nice trig window. Now this is, we can see, we know that our um, our domain is from negative 1 to 1 and our range is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Um, we might want to zoom in on this a little bit. So I'm going to trace on 0 and hit enter and then zoom in and hit enter one more time so we can get a better idea of that graph. And you can see that um, it really is, it's close to linear. There is a curve there, but it is very close to linear. Let's look at our window from the zoom. So we're at, the window is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 and um, negative 1 to 1. If I wanted to just trace on a value, if I traced on 1, it hit enter, and so when the, the trig ratio is 1, the angle is 1.57 and that is um, pi over 2. So the same can be done to graph inverse cosine and inverse tangent. You can graph this the same exact way. Uh, what I want to show you is how to graph the other three trigonometric inverses that you will not be responsible for graphing but you should know how to graph them on your calculator. So the inverse cosecant, inverse secant, and inverse cotan. Now we know that the inverse sine means the angle whose sine is x. And since cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine of x, this means that inverse cosecant has the same meaning
as the angle whose sine is 1 over x. Remember, for inverse trig functions, this value right here is a trig ratio. And the trig ratios for sine and cosecant are reciprocals of each other. So you'll notice when you look at the calculator, let's go into y equals and we'll clear out that, um, you don't, there are no cosecant, secant, um, and cotangent buttons. So what we have to do, we'll have to do inverse, to, so to do inverse cosecant, we'll do inverse sine, and then we'll take the reciprocal, 1 over x. So this means the angle whose, whose um, sine is 1 over x, that's the same thing as saying the angle whose cosecant is x. I'm going to do a zoom trig, which is a zoom 7. And that is your inverse um, cosecant graph. We'll do the same thing if we want to graph the inverse secant. We have to do inverse cosine of 1 over x. And we can graph that in the same window. And the last one, um, the inverse cotan. Go into my y equals and I would want the inverse tan, second tan of 1 divided, let's try that again, second tan of 1 divided by x, and then we've already zoomed in on a trig, so we'll leave it, and there's our inverse um, cotan function. So on the last page of your handout, I have summarized all the, um, the domains and ranges of the original six trig functions, and also the domains and ranges of the, of the six inverse trig functions. But the first three are the only, um, the only three that you're responsible for, inverse sine, inverse cotan, and inverse tan. Um, you, you should be able to graph them using your calculator and you should also be able to evaluate using your calculator so I just I'll show you one so I think if you know how to graph them you should know how to evaluate one let's do one evaluate of an inverse uh, say cosecant so if I wanted to evaluate the inverse cosecant of 2 that's the angle whose cosecant is 2 that's the same thing as the angle whose sine is 1 half and so this is actually one that you should be able to do you know, without a calculator, but let's pull up the calculator. And so to evaluate this, we're going to say second sine of the reciprocal of 2, which is 1 half. Okay. We've got an answer of 0.523. And we happen to know that um, the, in, the angle whose sine is a half is pi over 6. We'll just double check the decimal value, pi divided by 6 gives us the same exact value, 0.523598. So that's how you evaluate um, the other three inverse trig functions. You use the original trig function, but take the reciprocal of the argument. So what you need to know, um, you need to be able to evaluate the inverse trig functions without a calculator, and that would be for special angles only. You need to know the domains and ranges of all of these, of the, um, the six original and the three, inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent. Uh, you need to know the equations of any, of any asymptotes, um, and just basically how to evaluate them. As far as graphing them, you only need to graph uh, the inverse trig functions, you just need to graph one, you know, just the basic graph. There will be no transforming of those. But for sine and cosine, you need to know how to transform them. Um, and then the tan, cosecant, secant, and cotan, you won't be asked to graph a transformation, but you should be able to do a graph matching um, of a transformation.